Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we will be reacting to the 1985 classic film Teen Wolf, starring Michael J. Fox. This is a donation reward for Venom0027, so thank you, as always, Venom, for your donation. And so yeah, Teen Wolf is a classic movie that I think there's a sequel to but isn't starring Michael J. Fox for some reason. There's also a TV series that has like six seasons. And the only thing I know about Teen Wolf besides, you know, basic stuff like Year and Michael J. Fox <laughs> is that it is a teen comedy and it's about Michael J. Fox becoming a werewolf. That's like all I know about it. Um, I might have seen a clip or two randomly here or there. But in general, it's just not a film I've heard a lot about of. I, I, I know people tend to like it. But just in terms of like specifics with the plot and everything. I think there there is one other thing I think I know. I think he plays basketball in it, I want to say. Because I think I saw like a screenshot one time where he was in his wolf form playing basketball. But again, I don't know like details on like how he becomes a werewolf or anything. Or it, what the conflict would be other than just becoming a werewolf. And so on and so forth. Um, I really don't entirely know what to expect from this movie, but I know that obviously we'll get a great performance from our lead because Michael J. Fox is great. He's always been a really great actor. Um, I mean, he's one of the biggest reasons why Back to the Future was as successful as it, it, as it was. It's one of the most legendary film trilogies of all time, and it still stands up to this day. Like, there may be a couple jokes that are a little questionable now, but the movies as a whole are still really good. All three of them. And Michael J. Fox is one of the biggest reasons why. His role as Marty McFly was legendary. Um, and obviously Christopher Lloyd is amazing as well. And more recent years, uh, Michael J. Fox has been uh, fighting with Parkinson's disease. He opened up... Uh, his own like foundation for it and everything and people are just still like in love with him like <laughs> the dude i don't think ever really had a controversy he, he's just always been one of the most wholesome likable actors out there and made just a really big name for himself to the point where he's still just extremely beloved by pretty much everyone <laughs> Um, kind, of, kind of like uh, the likes of Brendan Fraser. And Brendan Fraser, though he has had some issues, they were not his fault. He was the victim of them. And nowadays with his recent comebacks through television and film and everything, he's been getting exceptional support. Uh, I, for one, am super excited to see Darren Aronofsky's The Whale uh, with him and Sadie Sink in it. Uh, one, the plot sounds just fascinating. And two, it's Brendan Fraser and Sadie Sink. Two amazing actors. It, it's like they're both going to do amazing. Sadie Sink has been phenomenal in Stranger Things, especially the most recent season. And Brendan Fraser's just always been phenomenal. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Um, but, yeah... Michael J. Fox has always been just kind of the same. And honestly, he's pretty good looking too, just admittedly. And so I don't really know what else to expect from this. Like, I, I know about werewolf lore, but I don't think we're going to get a lot of that in here. Like, I doubt we're going to get anything with silver, though. Maybe. I, I, I really doubt, like, a silver bullet thing, but maybe silver will come into play in some way. Like, maybe silverware. Like, maybe his family will have silverware made of actual silver, and that will start to affect him. That could be interesting, just a way to bring that in without having to, like, you know, go too heavy with it. <laughs> um, 
something simple like that. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how much of the lore they're going to get into here. I don't know what they're going to do really with it. All I know is it's a comedy. It's about an hour and a half long. And it's something I've kind of always wanted to see. Just never really sat down and checked out. So, once again, I give a big thanks to Venom for donating for this. And let's just uh, get into it and check it out. So, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, then it fades back in. Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the movie. So, with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Okay, so, this was Teen Wolf, and just general thoughts right off the bat, um, it was good. Not anything amazing, not even what I'd say great, but it was good good um I, I acknowledge that this is from 85 and everything so there are some things that are very much uh they didn't age well <laughs> um there's a certain word used in it for example that is not okay nowadays and, and again i know 1985 but still and and there's just some things about it that were just a little off i feel to me um, so, yeah, it's just, it, 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 it's not perfect. Um, but it's, again, not bad. Also, let me check something here real quick. Okay. So. This movie came out just over, uh, well, actually, I, I, it would probably be better to say just under two months after Back to the Future. So Back to the Future and Teen Wolf came out back to back, and that's actually pretty interesting that Michael J. Fox had two notable films come out that, that close to each other. And while Back to the Future obviously did much better, Teen Wolf has gotten a pretty notable uh, fandom behind it, I guess you could say. Um, but apparently the critical response was mixed. According to this, and according to Rotten Tomatoes, which as I always say, take with a grain of salt because it's Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, according to Rotten Tomatoes, though, 42% of 33 crit critics gave it a positive review, which is a very small amount of critics, by the way with an average rating of 5.1 out of 10. The consensus reads, though Michael J. Fox is as charismatic as ever, Teen Wolf's coming of age themes can't help but feel a little stale and formulaic. Um, I don't know if that, when that consensus was specifically written, you have to acknowledge this was from the mid eighties. So at that time, I really don't think it was formulaic. It was like, this was one of the movies that kind of created a lot of those themes and ideas. On Metacritic, the film has a 25 out of 100 rating based on only five critics. Again, how do you form a real consensus on that few critics? Um, let's, let's hear some actual thoughts, though. Vincent Canby of the New York Times gave the film a negative review, calling it aggressively boring. He, want, he went on to say that the film is overacted by everyone except Mr. Fox, who is seen to far better advantage in Back to the Future. And I acknowledge he's definitely better in Back to the Future. Uh, Colin Greenland reviewed Teen Wolf for White Dwarf number 75, I don't know what that's supposed to be, <laughs> and, stated that and stated that anxious that their movie should be perfectly wholesome, clean, and bloodless, Writers and director forgot Scott was supposed to be a werewolf and made him a basketball star instead. Uh, okay, so apparently White Dwarf is a magazine published by British games manufacturer Games Workshop. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Anywho, so there's some 
there there's some validity to some of this and like colin greenland's review specifically mentioning that the that the writer writers and director felt the movie should be perfectly wholesome clean and bloodless and it didn't fe feel very much like a werewolf film and yeah i'm sorry but that's probably my biggest complaint here and i didn't expect this to be like horror or anything i didn't expect this to be like super scary or super intense or have a lot of blood and gore and shit no but it was so like ridiculously clean cut it was like why was he a werewolf why did they need to make him a werewolf for this they could have done anything and it would have had the same effect the werewolf feels tacked on and completely needless nothing about it nothing about this feels like a werewolf story the only aspects that the werewolf actually gives is the the aggression and, and that's honestly barely even touched on the aggression only comes up a couple times and it's so sudden and fast that you almost forget it happens and even in the even in that part during the dance where he uh, uh where he attacks quote unquote his i guess you could say rival um all he does is rip up his clothes a little not even like to a massively like horrifying degree and it's it's so it, it's so how do I put it? Cleanly done that it's it's just it's it doesn't even feel impactful. Like for something that's supposed to be the big like moment where Scott like you know goes too far and is supposed to like you know he he let his anger get a hold of him, it really didn't read that bad. I, I think it would have made a lot more sense if when he wolfed out, like even if there was just a little bit of blood, a little bit of like some red scratches there. Or, or, and maybe if he had also, like, punched the guy out, that would have been a little more impactful. But it was so clean and just... So uneventful that it, it, it did feel, admittedly, very uninteresting in that regard. And, again, it just feels like the werewolf was just put in there for the sake of having it in there without actually like making it work um there was some acting from some of the other actors that was a little off i, I acknowledge but i wouldn't say it was like extremely overacted like the one critic said i i think that's a little bit of an exaggeration there um it was just it was a little off it could have been better, could have been workshopped, maybe do another take or something. But it wasn't, like, terrible. I've seen much worse. Um, and Michael J. Fox, while not as good as in Back to the Future, he was still really good here. And it seems like most, mostly everyone agrees on that, at least. <laughs> um, I think the best way to put this is that this felt like a Disney Channel original movie. Like, you, you know those old Disney Channel original movies where it's like, oh, this character is a leprechaun, but they also play basketball. Uh, and he discovers he's a leprechaun. This character discovers they're a mermaid, but they're also, like, really into sports. And it's like, that was, like, a big thing for Disney Channel for a while. And it's like, we're going to make a sports movie, a coming-of-age sports movie, but we're going to make the character a mythical creature and i wonder if it, i wonder if it originated from this i wonder if that's where they got those ideas but the problem is maybe it's because i saw those first but this feels like a disney channel original movie to me but even in in terms of the the acting the directing the shot composition really everything about it feels like a disney channel original movie even the pacing of it uh, the fact that there's no real strong conflict, like the conflicts in this, let's be honest, were cheap as hell. And there's certain things that you feel like there should have been something more to, but just it, they never did anything with. Like, for example, when Scott 
scared the liquor shop uh, owner into giving him a keg of beer, that never went anywhere. He never got in trouble for it. There was never any, like, story about the liquor shop owner, like, uh, calling the cops or something and, and, and like, being afraid or any, anything like that. It, it never was addressed again. And I feel like it should have been. I, I genuinely feel like there should have been something more to that. It's just, I feel like this needed more time to flesh some things out. Because also, the werewolf shit started happening pretty much from the get-go, from the very beginning of the film. They didn't even allow you to get to know the character first. Um, it, it's just like, oh, we start off with this basketball game. You're starting to hear his heart, and you're starting to see the signs of the werewolf coming in. And it took a little bit to actually build up to the full reveal, the full transformation. But everything was starting off right away. I think it would have been better if we had, like, maybe, say, 20 minutes to just get to know Scott as a character before all the werewolf shit started happening. Um... Instead, they had to kind of balance out building up his character with the werewolf stuff already starting. And it just, it felt like it was trying to force everything at once. And as such, nothing felt like perfectly um, handled. And mind you, like I said, it was still enjoyable to watch. Um, calling it like aggressively boring is ridiculous. It's hyperbole. It was not boring. It was just not really as great as it could have been. It was just good. Just good. <laughs> it, it, it was the very basic of good. If I had to give it like a number rating from 1 to 10, I would say 6.5. Maybe, maybe a soft 7. Somewhere in that range. It's good, but not great. It, it, it has its issues... Um, but it's still enjoyable enough to watch. Um, but watching it in 2022, it's like there are a lot of things that are very tropey. Um, a lot. In fact, most of the movie is pretty much in a bunch of tropes just stapled together. But you also, again, have to realize the movie came out in 1985. A lot of these tropes were still being established at that time. Even if they predated this film specifically... It was still fairly fresh during that time. So there's not really anything bad about that within the context. Um, and also this film has gained a bit of a cult following since its release. I, I've seen people talking about fair, fairly well enough, not like talking about the story or anything, but just saying like, oh yeah, I enjoyed Teen Wolf. That was a great Michael J. Fox film. When I hear people just say, like, oh, name a Michael J. Fox film, Teen Wolf comes up a lot. Just as much as Back to the Future. Well, maybe not just as much, but you know. Um, really, I, I would say, like, the only thing that was even slightly risky about this film was the, sh was the point where the one girl, the, I guess you could say popular girl, the actress girl, um, like is walking around her underwear, then pulls off her top to show her breasts to him, and it's very implied that they have sex. And it's risky because obviously there's the aspect of they're teenagers. Character-wise, they are teens. And it's like, yes, in real life, teenagers have, and still do to this day, experiment with sex. And there's... A questionable aspect on whether or not that's okay or not it's very back and forth and it's hard to say with certainty um sometimes it feels like you should just say oh it depends on the person but sometimes you feel it's like oh no kids should maybe wait for that but it's it's hard to say it's hard to say with any certainty on what's right in that regard um and at the same time you have to acknowledge that the actors here are obviously adults. Like, Ma Michael J. Fox is an adult here, so him being in a scene like that 
you know that and it's not as weird because of that but it's but the characters are still kids you know so it, it kind of leaves this mixed reaction and that is definitely the most risky scene because like i said before nothing else in this is risky at all everything else is so clean it's ridiculous <laughs> um and again i think that was kind of the issue here this is like pg right i feel like this movie would have benefited if it was pg-13 had some more blood and a little more violence added in some more scary situations it would have helped with the entire werewolf aspect of it it would have helped with um with helping the climaxes and everything feel more intense and i just feel like also having the principal and having this other like rival both in this felt like a little overstuffed you didn't really need both have the rival or have the principal be out to get him you don't need both one or the other and if I were to choose one, I would say the rival. I, I feel like it made made a little more sense. It worked a little better. The uh, the the principal thing was just it felt tacked on. And even the story with like with uh, Scott's father and, and the principal having the history and all, and even with the with the payoff it had by the end, it's like it still felt very tacked on. It just wasn't as as impactful or interesting and felt like it was just another conflict to try and force this movie to have some kind of conflict um but yeah like overall again it was just good not great not not anything special just good 6.5 to a 7 i i think that that's a good place for it um it's better than just being meh, but it's not good enough to be great, you know? So I feel like, uh, I, I feel like I'm happy to finally have seen this. But I don't think it's something I'm going to be watching a lot again, compared to other films I've seen. Um, but it was definitely worth the watch. It was definitely worth checking out. Even if just to see another Michael J. Fox film. And again, like, it's a good thing I know that Michael J. Fox was an adult when filming this, because it's like, he's attractive. <laughs> he, is, he, he is. He still is, even to this day. Um, e even to this day, he's still attractive. Um, I, I've seen, like, uh, video and stuff of him more recently with, like, Christopher Lloyd and all, and it's like, like, even with the Parkinson's and all affecting his, his, his movements and his, his stability and everything, he's still attractive. He's still a good-looking guy. So, either way, I'd love to hear what you think about this film. So, tell me in the comments below. And as always, uh, if you wish to donate for a future reaction, whether it be a movie, a series, a YouTube video, or whatever else please feel free to contact me in the comments, on the Discord, on Twitter, wherever you feel the most uh, comfortable doing so. Uh, as long as I haven't seen the movie, show, YouTube video, etc., I am fairly okay with reacting to pretty much anything. Uh, time period doesn't matter. Genre doesn't matter. Even if it's something you don't necessarily think I'll like, Feel free to request it, because I've been surprised by a number of things on this channel already. So even if, you, if you're not sure if I'm going to like it or not, if you want to see me react to it either way, because you like the movie or you think it would be an interesting reaction, please feel free. But, as always, uh, donations um, are completely optional. You do get a reward for every donation, no matter how big or small it is. But they are completely optional. You don't have to do it if you don't want to or can't. Does not matter. None of my content on the channel will be behind a paywall. Everyone will get to see every reaction or other video I post anyway. So you'll never have to pay to see a video. Um, everything will always be available to everyone. Um, so that all being said, uh, yeah, 
thank you so much as always for tuning in and for now i'm connie and i'm signing off see y'all next time